it's always a party at Patchworks. Let's get this party started. Woot woot. Hi, this is Julie Karasek from Patchworks, and I am so excited that you're joining us tonight. Today, we are going to be talking about beginning paper piecing. Last week, we presented in our Aurafil Color Builders Club this gorgeous Sumatran elephant pattern, 16 inch finished, that is the start of our Color Builders Block of the Month program. It is done using a foundation paper piecing method and it is so beautiful, but it's a little bit different, a little bit interesting, a little bit uh, different technique. And what we thought we would do is that we would take a step back and we would share with you the fundamentals of paper piecing. You can use the fundamentals for things like this or for other simpler projects. We are walking through the Carol Doak method of paper piecing. There is a link on our post here to the Carol Doak instruction for beginning paper piecing using the add a quarter ruler. We will be using the paper piecing pattern that she has on her website as well. This is her learn to paper piece instructional pattern that we often use in class here, and I thought I would share that with you today. Let's take a look and see at which materials we will be using. So of course we're gonna need some fabric, and what I've done is I have gone ahead and I have pre-starched my fabric. When I am working with paper piecing especially, I do prefer to pre-starch my fabric. We are going to be using some foundation paper. There is a variety of different foundation papers for this demonstration. We are going to be using the June Taylor Perfect Piecing Foundation Paper. It is a translucent paper that is like a piece of interfacing. It can go through your printer and it tears away. One of the things that's interesting about this product is that since it's not paper, if you were not going to be washing your project, you could leave it in. You will want a rotary cutter and your basic cutting supplies. For your rotary cutter, make sure you're using nothing larger than a 45 millimeter. Wonder clips are going to help keep us organized. This roll and press is a really nice accessory that can help us do some ironless pressing of our seams. Microtex 7010 needles. Our add a quarter. For this project, we're going to be using the six inch. It is also available in the 12 inch or in the add an eighth size, which is a smaller lip for a smaller seam allowance. We are going to be using a simple index card to help us with our add a quarter. When we're working on our block, I like to use a small mat. Uh, you can use a rotating mat, but a small mat can also just help you manually spin. I like to use a little touch of glue when I get started with my paper piecing. Here are two different options we have in the store. The sew line is a smaller tip. The June Taylor is a larger tip. Both are fabric friendly. The sew line does come with refills. I also like to have a uh, paper scissor by me so that I can cut away some or cut through my paper as I'm working on it. I have gone ahead and printed my pattern right on the perfect piecing paper. If you do not have a printer available to you and you picked up copies of this in the store or you have a pattern from a book, you can always hand trace onto your paper piecing paper. In a pinch, you can use copy paper. The reason why we recommend foundation paper is that it is easier on your needle as well as it is easier to tear away and 
easier to remove from the back side of your pattern. For our project, I have trimmed these little shapes here. So this particular shape makes this flower or star point. It finishes to four inches, and if you make four of them, you can spin them together into this block. On Carol's pattern here, her lines end at her finished size, so we want to make sure when we trim this to start construction on it that we leave extra margin along the edge so that we'll be able to have our extra seam allowance. That is very important. When you are printing, I have this written here, we want to make sure that we're, that we're printing at 100%. On your printer settings, it's very important to look at that. By default, a lot of times, the printer is set to fit to printable area or some other setting. You want to make sure that it prints to 100% because you want it to translate exactly to the size of the PDF. On Carol's pattern, she has provided the different cutting sizes of rectangles that we'll be needing for the different shapes. So we are going to be using uh, the yellow, light purple, dark purple. I have written in, in, in my very uh, crazy scribbling here, my color key for myself. And what's really important when you work on something like this is to stay organized. So I have gone ahead and pre-cut for us, since this is all about the stitching, but I used the sizes here, and then I used the wonder clips, and then a little tag here to keep me organized with the sizes of fabrics that I need. I cut several because who knows, I might want to make a fun little wall hanging with this flower setting. So now we are ready to go. We've talked about our project or our materials that we need. We have our fabric prepped. We have our pattern printed. So I think we should start co uh, construction. So when you're working on paper piecing, one of the things that's really hard to get your head around is that you're sewing on the side that you can read and you're constructing the block the other way on the other side, okay? So it just takes a, a moment or two to kind of wrap your head around this. Working on a sample project like this can help translate that concept to help make sure that you understand the right and wrong positioning of the fabric. And after you get the hang of it, it is super fun and super easy. And the thing that's very nice about it as well is that you can make complex shapes that would be much more difficult to achieve with traditional piecing methods. Just gonna clear this off here so that we have some nice space to work with. Okay, so for our beginning piece, we're going to start with our first piece of fabric in position one. We are going to need our quick quarter ruler right away, or sorry, add a quarter ruler, and our rotary cutter, a little dab of glue, and our first piece of fabric, okay? So let's look down. And when we're positioning the fabric for the first time, we are going to flip this upside down, okay? So this is the right side we can read. We're gonna flip it upside down. I'm going to put a dab of glue on my number one piece in between the stitch lines. Don't wanna go crazy on that because we wanna be able to remove it later. And I'm gonna slip out one of these ones. If you prefer to put things in baggies or just in a slotted tray, you can do that as well. If you're working on a lot of these, uh, silverware trays can be really helpful for little compartments like that. So I positioned the fabric. Let's look at it this way, okay? So you can see 
that it would extend beyond the quarter inch seam allowance all the way. Oops, at the bottom it's not quite, so we're going to position it down just a little bit. Carol uses flathead pins for her instructions. I prefer the glue because that way I don't have any bulk. I also don't like how pins behave on paper. To get ready to position number two, we are going to position our index card. I'm going to flip this around so you don't get seasick on those lines. And I'm going to fold this back on the line between two and one. And then I'm going to take my add a quarter ruler and I'm going to position it up on this ledge and trim away the excess. So this is not necessarily the most fabric efficient method of sewing, but it is a very effective way of construction. Now we're going to look for a number two. So we're going to come over. It's a piece of background. And we are going to position these right sides together. So we have prepared our quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, and my positioning of my fabric, I need to make sure extends beyond the seam allowance of, or the, the margins of where I need to be. So I need to slide it up a little bit. Okay, so I know that my fabric is going to extend beyond this point and below there. At this point, you could use a pin or what I sometimes do is I take a little dab of glue and I put it right inside where that quarter inch seam allowance would be. Okay, so I can glue baste in where I want it to be, especially with larger pieces that can be really, really helpful or really, really small pieces like the elephant. And now we're ready to stitch. I don't have a uh, the camera on my machine today. So what I'll do is I'll talk you through what we're going to do. So when we're at the machine, we first want to reduce our stitch length to 1.5. Uh, if you have that setting. And the reason why is that we want to perforate that paper as well as make sure when we take the paper off that we're not going to be pulling out all of our stitches. I'm going to be putting it into my sh machine so that I'm going to be sewing over the paper. So on the back side, my right sides are together. We're very carefully going to feed it in because we want to make sure that the feed dogs don't eat up the beginning parts. And I am going to slow my speed down just a little bit. and I'm going to stitch. Nice little straight line. Make sure to go beyond a few stitches beyond where you need to go. If I was making a whole bunch of these, I would chain piece them just like I would chain piece anything else. So let's look overhead and I've stitched right here. I'm just going to go ahead and trim my threads there. And if I use this handy dandy guy here, I could just roll him over and I've starched everything. So see how nice he stays there? That can be really nice. If you were going to be using a heat iron, you would want to make sure to use a dry setting, so no steam, because you don't want the steam to impact your paper or your printing and get ink on the paper. That looks really nice. Now we are going to go ahead and position number th three. So I'm going to take my index card and I am going to put it right on this line here. Fold back 
add a quarter ruler, cut, and then we are going to position number three. So number three is right over here, right sides together. Let me visually check on this side. I'm gonna inch it down just a titch to make sure that I go from here to here, making sure I have my quarter inch margin. Once again, I'm gonna add a dab of glue in that seam allowance. Okay. Now, if this is a titch one way or the other, this is not precision piecing, this is paper piecing. So we're relying on the accuracy to come from the paper and not necessarily from the paper positioning. The most important function of the fabric with the positioning here is to make sure that it covers where it needs to cover. So now we're going to go back to our machine. Going to hop back over. All right, starting a little before. No back tacking. I don't want to add any extra bulk, but I do continue stitching beyond and you know I probably could get a smaller scissor than my giant paper piece scissors I probably should have had a little snip by me getting used to doing these video tutorials to have everything set up perfect here okay let's look overhead okay so I just trimmed the threads off and now we're ready to use our little roller here. This is just really nice. Da, da, da. Okay, so it just stays in place there. And we're going to go to number four now. Okay, so you can see number four right here. What are we gonna do? And I here I'm using my base mat because I have it available to me. And in this particular one, I am not rotating. So that's why I'm just using my big mat. There's other projects that you're using that the spinning would help. So here I have white thread that you cannot see, but I stitched to here, okay, where my thumbnail is. So it is farther than that line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the fabric down against the mat while I pull back so that I can pull the paper all the way back. Use a little crease. Use my add a quarter, trim. Having a little trash bucket right by you can be very helpful as well. We're going to be using number four, which is going to be this light purple. And this positioning is a very good exercise because if I put it right here where I'd naturally want to put it for the edge. When I'd flip it, it would come, let's come to the other side here so you can see the light. I think you can see that. Okay, you can see my hand. So if I put on the edge there, it wouldn't cover that whole space. So I need to make sure that I position it down farther. Let's flip it back over. So what is very interesting here is that I'm going to be positioning this beyond where the yellow is. So this is where one of those mind busters comes into play, okay? And how can we tell that it will work? Well, if we fold this back, you can see per, perhaps that it covers the space. So that is how you always want to make sure you check. And I lost it right there. So I'm going to reposition this 
Okay, make sure I have my margins for my seam allowance. Yes, I do. And then we're going to go back and sew. Right. Let's see how we did. It's so fun seeing these interesting shapes come together. Okay, so now we're going to turn this over. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Use our little roller here. That's really nice. Okay, and then we're ready for this piece. So that is number five. Number five is going to be the dark purple. We're going to line up our postcard, index card right there. Trimmed that off. Going to position number five, which is right here. Now this one isn't as difficult to see because it's such a long piece that it's easy to see how it will cover easily without you having to change the position. So that number four piece was a good exercise because that way you got to see how to position fabric to get it to cover your piece where you need to sew. Tiny bit of glue. So you can see why I like that really, that finer point because I just get that tiny, tiny dab in there to hold the fabric in position in the seam allowance. And we'll come back to our machine and sew. Put that presser foot down. If you end up getting a little bit off the line, don't fret, don't worry about it. You can make up for it in the next space. If you totally did something wrong, you are able to use your seam ripper. If you use your seam ripper and the paper breaks, what you'll want to do is use a little bit of clear scotch tape and that will put your paper back together so you can finish your block. All right, let's see how we're doing. And we're almost, almost there. I'm so excited. Okay, so we have number five on. Okay, da da da. And then we are going to position our six and seven background pieces on. Now this one, because we're far enough apart, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to show how you can set up both of them right away, okay? Ooh, we're going to be tricky. So, six, fold it back, use our add a quarter ruler, use our rotary cutter. Now I'm going to trim my number seven right away since they're on opposite sides of my unit. 
as you get working on these larger pieces. You're able to do that. Okay, now for pieces six and seven, it's identical. Two pieces of this white background fabric. I happen to be using some Spotted by Zen Chic. And you can see here, oh, a little bit of an overlay, so we will just position one at a time. If this were a little wider and this wouldn't cover, then I would go ahead and prep both. But we'll just start with number six. I got us all excited there. There still is no harm for having trimmed. As you're trimming, the one really important thing to keep re repeating to yourself is you need to add a quarter, okay? So it is trim, stitch, flip, trim, stitch, flip. I'm probably over at my machine now and have left you looking at the empty space, the empty cutting table. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave you hanging there. Okay, so here we are. Flipped over six. Give a little bit of a roller press here. Seven is all ready because we trimmed it before. Oops, I grabbed the little bit wider piece here, the wider glue. See, and this one's just a little bit harder to get that fine positioning. And I line this up right there. Now we'll go back over to the machine. Almost there. Almost, almost, almost. Have you ever paper pieced before? What did you like about it? What were you challenged with? Do you think it's the best thing ever? Okay, now we're going to flip this guy over. Number seven. Oh, and you can see my little spikes here and how they look. This time I'm actually going to use this because we're going to go around the square so it is nice to be able to have a small mat that we can rotate since we want to make sure to practice good cutting skills. So we need this to thin, we need this to be cut at four and a half because it's going to finish to four. I'm going to line up my rotary mate here. I can use either side of quarter inch. So here, here's the quarter. I'm going to use the line and this line here. Okay. If you used a square because you happen to have a square, I would still rotate, okay, quarter on the line here, rotate, Even if that quarter inch is printed on the paper, I still like to measure from the stitch line just to make sure that I understand what the pattern designer had intended. So, on the back side here, you can read the numbers. You can see we have our quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, let us do the reveal. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, look at that. It's a super pretty block that is the light purple, dark purple backgrounds and a yellow center. 
If you are making several of these to put together into a block, I do recommend that you keep your paper on until it's into the next unit. For example, this whole elephant still has the paper on the back. Not because I was afraid of how it would go, uh, afraid of, I don't know, not, I left it on so that it could be put into the next unit if I'm going to be sashing it or attaching it to something else. I wanted to make sure that I didn't have stretch. When you are working with blocks like this, because we started with that rectangle and then we cut off the edges, these edges all have a lot of bias on them. And so that's why it was really good to be using starch to get started so that we're not going to be having a lot of stretch when we're working with it because it's already nice and firm. So it's going to be less pliable unless if we really yank on it. Um, but leaving this paper gives it the structure, gives it stability, is a stabilizer for that next part after it's into where it needs to be, then we'll go ahead and take our paper off. So I hope this little lesson was helpful. We are going to be posting a journey with this with a little bit of a sewing demonstration for that, showing you how to be organized with your units, how to sew them individually, as well as how to sew your units together because we do have a bunch of irregular sizes going into that particular pattern. Be watching for that. Thank you for tuning in today. Remember to watch us every Thursday night for Must Sew TV. If you're watching this live, get ready for Tula Pink We Heart Tula and our Nebula quilt this Thursday evening. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day and happy sewing.